Here we go. Follow us on social media at Punt and Pass on Twitter and Instagram. I am at Drew Butler. Aaron is at Aaron Murray 11. And head on over to puntandpass.com for everything that you need to stay up to date with college football. It's got our picks, it's got my blog, it's got our YouTube channel. And it's got, of course, everywhere you can listen to Punt and Pass. We've had some great feedback through the website. People sending in some submissions, telling us what they think, asking us questions about the dogs, asking us questions about college football. We've also had some great reviews on iTunes and Apple Podcasts and Spotify. So we appreciate our Punt and Pass listeners, as always. Aaron, look, it's Friday. It's Friday the 13th. Thanksgiving's right around the corner. And, um... College football took a little bit of a hit this week. A lot of games in the SEC have been postponed. Some outside the SEC have been canceled. Now we're zeroing in. We're getting close to the finish line. The first rendition of the college football playoff rankings are set to come out in two weeks, I believe. And everybody's Mm -hmm. starting to look at the end of the season. Conference championship weekend, college football playoff time. You can't afford too many more weeks like this because then those games start to begin to be jeopardized. Man, I hope we can get past this. I hope it was a little spike from Halloween, as people are saying. Maybe a couple of parties on campus. Maybe a couple guys getting lax. Simply put, we hope everybody's safe. We hope this is a one-week thing. And, man, it would be nice just to cruise on through the rest of the season and get this all in. Yeah, listen, you know, to we knew there was going to be some issues along the way. To think that we are going to make it throughout a season – Without this kind of hiccup of this magnitude was was a little bit naive. I mean, we're talking about you know 18 and 22 year old kids that are gonna uh, they're gonna screw up at some point. We were all that at that age. You and I made a lot of mistakes in college. I think me a little bit more than you. Um, <laughs> to say that I just didn't get caught. Say, yeah, yeah. <laughs> to, to say that listen, you're gonna have to quarantine yourself and and do everything perfect for this amount of time. Uh, you know these kids were gonna get bored. You know they're gonna get lax, and you know they're gonna. Yeah, like I said, mess up at some point along the way. So, you know, Halloween, they want to have some fun. And, and the issue is for both ways, you know, midway through the season, some teams aren't doing good. The kids are sick of quarantining. They're like, man, this season's over. We're two and three. You know, we just want to have fun now. Yeah. So they screw up. And then the teams that are doing well, they want to celebrate. They want to enjoy. They want to enjoy the success that they're used to doing uh, on a Saturday weekend. I mean, they're used to playing football, winning going out and celebrating with their buddies and having a good time. And, and you know, eventually they want to go out and celebrate these big victories, especially, like I said, around a holiday like Halloween. So maybe this was a wake-up call. You know, I was hoping what happened to Florida about a month, month and a half ago was a wake-up call to the entire country, especially mm-hmm. the SEC. Like, listen, look what's going on with Florida. They're missing two straight weeks. You know, let's let's not be that. And I, if I was a coach or a trainer, I'd be just just harping on it every single day in meetings like, guys – Let's not forget about what happened to Florida. Let's not forget about what happened to this team and yeah. this team, this team and this team. Let's not do that. But like I said, we're still talking about 18 to 22 year old kids. They're going to mess up. Um, so hopefully this is just a small blip because, you know, the issue is we're running into the, the fact that, you know, we may have to start moving stuff around because you know, the great thing about the SEC we've said all year is the fact that they have these built in bye weeks. Yeah. Well, there's only two still. You know, and now all of a sudden, like, you know, the, the, the Ford LSU game was going to have to be made up at the end of December. Well, now Alabama LSU is going to have to be made up. So do you add to add another week to the 19th and move back the SEC championship t- game to the gate the day after Christmas, which is crazy to me to yeah. say, hey, you guys can't enjoy Christmas with your family. You got to play a game the next day. But I mean, these are the discussions that are going to have to be made because it's great to have the built in weeks, but. They're starting to get a little overcrowded now, unfortunately. Yeah, they really are. I mean, it's getting down to it where decisions are going to have to be made. How do you prepare? How do you bring back the lost games? Some are getting canceled. I mean, Ohio State, Maryland, and the Big Ten has been canceled. They don't have any more opportunities to make up that game, so it's off the table. Ohio State will have one less game than right now, Indiana who could very well be in front of them at the end of the season just based off the number of games they played. I mean, I understand Indiana's a great story at this point, but can anybody watch those two teams and legitimately say that Indiana is better than Ohio State? I don't think so. I don't think so. Well, we said the same thing about them in Michigan, though, and and they waxed Michigan. So maybe, I don't know, man, who knows? But to me, the, the, the only team in that conference was Wisconsin for sure and, and Wisconsin didn't play a great opponent week one but they looked pretty damn good but and they you know, their chances of doing anything this year 
are just slowly dwindling away every single week because of the the, the fact that they're missing so many games and and obviously the uncertainty of hey you may miss one or two more along the way here in the last month yeah. of the season you yeah know, that's you know it's that's that's at least the good thing about the SEC is the fact that they did it they were early um, and they had a couple built in at least to to you know help with the situation you know like we said along the whole time with the Big Ten. Um, you know, they screwed up, you know, they dropped the ball with, with pushing this thing so far back where you knew there was going to be problems along the way. Now they just can't fix it unless, you know, the committee for the college football playoffs decides to push this thing back to late, late, no, late January, excuse me, early February. I mean, how, how crazy would that be? But, you know, I, I love what it's, I think Sankey came out and said it yesterday. And he's like, listen, there's a sign on the back of my office that says flexibility. Yeah. And, and, and I mean, that's, that's the word of 2020 right now. I mean, flexibility is going to be key. I mean, are we going to have to play the SEC championship game the day after Christmas? Maybe. You know, it's it, it could happen. Are we yeah. going to just have to cancel LSU's game versus Florida and Alabama? Maybe. I mean, I could see that happening. I mean, if you get to the end of the season and Alabama's undefeated, Florida has one loss, and they're in the SEC championship game, that game is not important. Yeah, I mean, obviously it's, it's a, a moot great point. It's between Alabama and LSU. But then it gets into the fact that is it fair? You know, is it fair for Alabama to have to play LSU on the 19th and Florida gets two weeks off to prepare for the SEC championship game? Uh, then all of a sudden Alabama runs the risk of getting, you know, players hurt for a game that doesn't mean anything. So you know, you may see that game totally wiped out for both teams. You may see it added on. It's, it's just a lot of scenarios that, you know, time will tell what's going to happen. I think the most important thing, though, is let's just get everyone healthy enough to play these games and and stop with the cancellations because it was going to be a great slate of games this weekend. Yeah. I mean, we had seven in the SEC for goodness sakes, uh, and now that's dwindled down to three. Um, and lucky for us, we have the Masters to at least keep us yes. occupied. But great timing! You know, I would have loved a full slate of football games. No, I totally agree with you, Aaron. I mean, I think you hit everything right on the head. There, there's a specific situation going on in the SEC, and I think, like Greg Sankey's leadership has shown. Flexibility is key. So how are they going to move forward with the SEC championship, you know, a month away? Okay, here's what I think, right? Clearly, the the first thought is get everybody healthy, get everybody safe, you know, let them know we, we don't have flexibility when it comes to these protocols. You guys have to bunker down. There are four weeks left. If you want to finish this season on the right note, do what needs to be done to make it to the SEC championship game. They have positioned themselves as a league to, at this point, even with the attrition of the schedule this week, like you said, starting with seven, now down to three or four games. Is that right? What's that? How many games three are in games. the three games this weekend three in the SEC? SEC right. This so here's what I think could happen: Alabama is going to win the West. Florida is going to win the East. They both have had to postpone their game with LSU. At the end of the season, okay, if they need to make up that specific game, and they're both going to be in the SEC championship regardless, because that's what would happen if they both win mm-hmm. all those games with that one LSU game sitting there for both Alabama and Florida. Screw it. Don't they're play the game. game. Who cares about fairness? It's 2020. Fairness has been thrown out the window. I think it's more important to stay on schedule, play the game on December the 19th, play the SEC championship game as scheduled, and some of the other teams, like Georgia and Missouri, who had to postpone this weekend, or Tennessee, Texas A&M, who had to postpone this weekend, play that game on December 19th. Okay? Well, that's what the Big Ten's doing. Yeah, and I think it's smart. You know, they, they, they have eight plus one, so conference championship weekend – you the two conf- the, the two best teams playing the conference championship, I'm fine with and that. everyone else has a game as well, just to add in the ninth game. So I, I'm yeah, totally I'm, I'm fine with, with that. I think it's yeah. a smart way to do it. I, I think it keeps consistency in the schedule. I think most importantly, it puts the two teams that deserve to be in the SEC championship, Alabama and Florida, at this point, to let them maintain some consistency to hopefully have a great game. That's a 60 minute battle, and hell, maybe both of them end up in the college football playoff. But the college football playoff is what's being brought into Zoom Focus right now. And Big 12 Commissioner Bob Bowlesby told Sirius XM Radio yesterday that there have been discussions about delaying the college football playoff and the New Year's Six Bowls because of the pandemic and the ongoing problems right now. He said, quote, I'm on the CFP Operations Committee, and we spent some time talking about that. We have not come to any closure on it, but there is some latitude to postpone it if the need should arise. He continues, Aaron, and he said, the same is true with some of the New Year's Six games. 
I don't know if I see us playing in a championship game in February, but you just never know. These are unusual times, and things that might not otherwise be acceptable have to be considered in this kind of circumstance. So that's where it stands right now. Uh, again, we saw this pop up, what, the first couple weeks of the season where everybody's yep. like, oh, no, here we go. Um, hopefully this was from some lax um, actions Halloween weekend, we can move forward. You know, Thanksgiving's coming up. Then, like you said, Christmas. Who knows? Maybe these teams just say, guys, we can't afford it. Um, Everybody needs to stay here. We need to barrel through this and get the football going. But, man, what what a crazy time. And like you said, thankfully, the Masters is this weekend, which is awesome. Uh, Wall-to-wall coverage for some Masters tournament in Augusta. Weather was a bit dicey yesterday on Thursday for the opening round, but today it is absolutely beautiful. You and I are taping this at 8 a.m. I already got the live stream going all day. Golf. All day. What golf. Is it on? I just got to go to what? ESPN? Masters.com. Masters.com. That's, and that's you can, it. And you can live Masters. stream com. Masters.com, man. So that is definitely a great opportunity. You know what else is great? On prize picks, you can play the Masters, which is what I will be doing this afternoon. You just guess over or under on their fantasy point projections. Use the promo code PUNT. You get a 100% match on your first deposit up to $100. So if you think Tiger's going to go low again today, take Come on, his Tiger. over. Come on, take Tiger. Take his over. What about Bubba Watson, former Georgia Bulldog? Take his over. I think he goes low today. Use the promo code PUNT of course, and get a 100% match on your first deposit up to $100. All right, so I was on um, thescore.com. That's where I get like all my lines. That's where I look at the schedule. I think it's a really good uh, interface for a sports website. So I went to the I went to week 11, and, and uh, there was no week 11. I was like, what? So I'm like, it says week 10 and week 12. And I'm like, where is week 11? This is, this is week 11 in college football. And I noticed that my settings have it at top 25 games only. And there are no top 25 games this weekend. Get this, Aaron. Did they not this, put in just top 25 teams? There are no top 25 teams playing. Or excuse me. There are no top 25 games against Matches. each other this yeah, weekend. Two. Yes. Yeah, that's this depressing. is a statistic from the Bear at College Game Day, Chris Felica. This is the first week since week 12, 2009, which was Saturday, November 21st, 2009, where there is not a single matchup of AP ranked teams in November. That week, four ranked teams, excuse me, that week in 2009, four ranked teams lost to unranked teams, three coming on the road, and there were two other games where the ranked teams won by a field goal. So, first time in 11 years. There's not a top 25 matchup on a college football weekend. And, um, excuse me, in November, that is. Yeah, and it looks like there could crazy. be some opportunities for these ranked teams to go down in Week 11. So let's look towards Week 11. We got some Big Ten action tonight, which, again, I love the Friday night Big Ten. I think it's mm-hmm. awesome. They need to keep that going past Pac-12 this season. Pac-12 needs to start putting some some games on the on Friday night. So they did it last time. year. Remember? That- yeah, that, that and I, you know, I understand you don't want to wake up and play a game at nine o'clock in the morning out there on the West Coast. But, you know, the fact that they are able to get that game in at noon on the East Coast and have some people watch it. Yeah, I think it's really important for that league this year. So, yeah, anytime you can get games in, um, you got to get in. Look at look at what the Mac has created, the the energy and love for Mac action. Mac Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I mean, it's I got some Mac action next week. I got a double header. I got a game Wednesday. I'm covering. Uh, Mac action, and then I have to fly to the West Coast for a game on Saturday. So I'm doing a little double dipper. CBS has me working overtime over here. Hey, I um, love it. But yeah, they got to find a way to get these games in and get some more fans watching them if they want to. That's especially the Pac-12 that wants a chance to get into the playoffs. You better get some eyeballs on your damn games. No question. Um, and I totally agree with you. I mean, Friday night college football is awesome. No complaints there. All right, let's dive into this. Let's do a little pump pass and pick. You know, last weekend it was what it was. I'm now 25 and 20. I was two and three a week ago. My lock did hit. I'm three, three, one on my flip the field free pick. Aaron, uh, you went three and two. You're 23 and 22. You're above 500. Your lock, your lock is skidding a little bit. You're four and three. I know. You started off I don't know four what's going and on. I, and I felt so damn good about these locks too. Yeah, but we got to get that going. We absolutely have to get that you. going. Let's start with the number nine ranked team in the country. Miami, the U, heads to take on Virginia Tech. Get this, Virginia Tech is a two-and-a-half point home favorite against De'Eric King, Rhett Lashley, and the Miami Hurricanes. That line stinks out loud. Miami is a better football team than Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech lost to Liberty 
last weekend. That was Seriously? my flip the field free pick. And let me just say this off the bat before we get into the game. You're hearing tons of rumors about coaches in the SEC. Jeremy Pruitt, has he lost Tennessee? Will Muschamp, are they thinking about canning him after this season? Gus Malzahn, who the hell knows? But everybody is circling the waters for Hugh Freeze. There is no doubt about it. And he just I heard, extension. Well, it, and what does that matter? He's at liberty, for God's it. sakes. He's going to go right back into the SEC. I heard— He's getting paid $3 million a year to be at liberty. That's I mean, not that's, bad. That's, that's not, not a bad. bad gig. Okay, but I heard, and tell me if you heard this, I heard that he might get blackballed by Greg Sankey. Greg Sankey might say, uh-uh, buddy, you're not allowed back in the SEC after what he did at Ole Miss— I could see one school and one school only giving the middle finger to Greg Sankey and saying, no way, buddy, we're getting him in here. That's Auburn. Auburn. Auburn would say, dude, absolutely not. Gus is fine this year, though. Okay. Okay. They're they're playing really well right now, so I don't think – Gus's job is perfectly fine at the moment. So I know people – every single year we have this Gus conversation. But, you know, 2020 with one, the fact that these coaches get a little bit of leeway – the fact that they're playing good football, I think Gus is fine. So, no, I, I don't see it happening. All right. We will revisit that down the road. But just think, Hugh Freeze, I mean, come on now. In the SEC, it would be trouble. I would like to keep him out of the SEC East because he kind of owns Kirby Smart back to their days, Ole Miss and Alabama. And it would be really interesting to see him in the SEC West with a chance to go up against Saban every single year. Who knows, though? Who knows? Maybe it's just wishful thinking on my end. All right. First game, Miami. Heading to Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech's a two-and-a-half-point favorite. I don't know here, man. I, I think you just take Miami and roll. I mean, Miami's going to beat Virginia Tech by by a field goal. Yeah, I listen, the fact that they lost to Liberty at home, I mean, take away home field advantage, for goodness sakes. And, you know, we think Virginia Tech, we think defense, defense, defense. And, you know, right now they're giving up close to 32 points per game. So, obviously, defense is not the thing this year for Virginia Tech. Offense is the thing, though, for Miami this year. You know, the resurgence of those guys on that side of the football. Yeah. Derrick King is a – dude, he's a monster, man. He really is. And, and you know, I think they, they lost some steam with him against that game against Clemson and then kind of the Heisman discussion. But the numbers that he's been able to put up this year, both throwing and running, you know, any other year – you know, he would have a chance to be in New York and, and, and be a finalist for the Heisman. Who knows? He still may if he continues down this path right now. So, you know, I just think Miami has too much momentum, too much good juju. Uh, they're rolling on both sides of the football. I think they go in there and, and, and win this football game. So I'm with you, man. The, the line kind of – it does stink, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick with Miami on this one. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, give me the points for sure. Like you said, De'Aaron King is a baller. Rhett Lashley has these guys playing at a very, very high level. And they know. Miami knows that these are the types of games. Look, we're going up to Virginia. Is it going to be colder than South Beach, than Coral Gables? Yes, of course. But I don't think it's going to be frigid or anything like that, mm-hmm. even though it's mid-November. These guys have to win these t- type of games if they want to take the next step up in the ACC, which it seems they have. They, they certainly have taken that step up to this point in the season. And keep the damn thing going. Let's go, Canes. Give me the two and a half points. I feel like it's a sucker bet, but who cares? I will take the points. I just don't see Virginia Tech having the ability to slow down De'Ara King and lay points and win. I mean, if it was like Virginia Tech plus six, I might think about it. But yeah. I think Miami's going to win this game by a field goal, which then would allow them to cover. All right, I think this could be game of the week, and thank God it hasn't been canceled yet. Number two, Notre Dame. Taking yep, on Boston you. College in Chestnut Hill, 3.30 p.m. kickoff. Notre Dame, a 13-and-a-half point favorite, Aaron. I don't know. I mean, off of a enormous win a week ago, obviously they knocked off number one ranked Clemson. Now they hit the road. This is a long-time rivalry game. Two private Catholic schools, lots of history. I just think right here in this specific spot, it is a clear letdown spot. For Notre Dame, am I saying they lose? I don't know. Am I saying I like Boston College plus 13 and a half? Absolutely. I think you have to take the points here, Aaron. This is a big time spot for Notre Dame from an emotional standpoint, from a momentum standpoint, a lot to ask of the Fighting Irish. Yeah, but I think the thing is, you know, everyone's been talking about it all week. Yeah, you know, I think that's been the number one thing. Not going to sneak up on them. Everyone's been saying, oh, they're going to slip up at some point these next two weeks. They got Boston College. They got North Carolina. I mean, shoot, I've been saying it. I think they hear it. I think they feel it. 
Um, I, I've just been such a believer in this defense the entire season. I mean, that defense has been rolling, and and you know, Ian Book just finds ways to win football games and take care of the football. Only one pick, which I believe was in the first game of the season. Williams has run the ball really hard, so. You know, I, I I think they take care of business here. Was it 13 and a half points, you 13 said? 13 and a half, Boston College. Um, I'm going to go BC. <laughs> yeah, you got to take that the talk. points there, right? I think 13 and a half, that's just too much, man. That's a lot of points and on Boston the College isn't bad this year. No, they're Their a good defense football defense is really good. Um, you know, I think Notre Dame wins this game by somewhere. In, I think they win double digits. I think they win between 10 and 13. It's just that half point gets me a little bit right there. So I don't think this is a two-touchdown game. Um, you know, Notre Dame still built mostly to play great defense, run the football. Um, you know, last week they were able to get some turnovers, a defensive touchdown is, you know, and obviously going to double overtime, but you know, I just like BC at home. They're going to step up that you saw what they did versus Clemson a couple weeks ago. I think they keep it a little bit closer. Notre Dame, like I said, they, they still win by double digits, not just, not just 13 and a half though. So I'll take BC. I think that's the right pick. Um, you, you saw what Boston College was able to do, keeping it close against Clemson, really giving Clemson a run. I know Clemson didn't have Trevor Lawrence. I know Travis Etienne did cough the ball up a few times, which he needs to shore up big time. He's kind of getting lax with the football, which is giving me some worries. But Trevor Lawrence is back for them. Besides the point, Boston College should be able to keep this close. They have the knowledge, the mental preparation to know we can hang with the best. We can hang with the best. And think about them. I mean, a couple weeks ago, they go into the number one team in the nation at Clemson, are up by 14 at halftime. Now, a couple weeks later, they're going to host a number two team in the nation. Who would have thought the ACC would have the number one and the number two teams ranked in the nation at any point of 2020? I guess well, it's let's just go back to what we ta- you, ta- you brought it up weeks ago, Drew. But you know the way the SEC's looked right now this season, the ACC is the better conference. I think so. It is. It, it really is. It, I mean, you look at it from top to bottom, um, and the teams are in there. Obviously, it helps big time when you have Notre Dame in there and the fact that Notre Dame beat Clemson. Um, but, I mean, Notre Dame, Clemson, Miami, we just talked about those guys and how well they're playing this season. North Carolina, I know Virginia Tech just had a terrible loss last week, but their season's not too shabby. Wake Forest is playing good football. Boston College is playing good football. Yep. NC State's playing great football. Pittsburgh, I mean, this is – this is a good conference this year. You know, we gave yeah. them a lot of flack last year. It was not great. Um, but I just think there's some there's some heavy hitters at the top of the conference right now. And you look at the SEC and what is it? It's Alabama. It's Florida. And that's it. Everyone else kind of is A&M. Um, Looks good up to, up to this point. I mean, they got blown out by point. Bama. But yeah. Yeah. It just – I just feel like it's 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 been a unique year. 2020 has definitely been a unique year. Um, but I still think at the end of the day, though – the issue with college football is there's a huge gap. I said it yesterday on my on my show with with CC is there's just such a huge gap between the elite teams and everyone else. And like it comes, there yeah. is, I mean, the, the Ohio State, the Clemson, the Alabama. I mean, I guess you can throw Notre Dame in there after you know their win last week versus Clemson. There's those teams, like five teams up there. And then I just think there's a huge drop after that to then you get to the next level and tier of football teams. So. It's just, it, it, you know, it's unfortunate because I don't th- see much changing, you know, you, you not just this year, but the next year and then even years past. I mean, what has it been? It's been Alabama and Clemson and a couple other yep. teams. And then, then there's just a huge division. So um, it stings because you would love some more, you know, up and downs and other teams showing up and playing better football. But the 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 beasts of college football are here. They've been here for a while, and I don't think they're going anywhere for, for a while either. No, I totally agree with you. And and it's all up to that relentless recruiting. I mean, they yep. are going after the top players. Those top players choose between those five schools, and around and around we go. Um, from a player development standpoint, yes, it's great to get three and four stars and develop them into NFL talent, but when you surround your program with four and five stars, that's how you become an elite team, okay? And I... I saw somebody say this about Georgia, and, and of course it was tongue in cheek. They said, "I hope Georgia never gets another five star," because he's sick of hearing everybody say the program is done and Kirby can't do it when you lose one game and you've got a bunch of five stars on your roster. I mean, it takes time to build a team. I'm not saying by any stretch that Kirby and the Dogs have not had enough time, but you, you're, you're comparing yourself to Clemson and Alabama, which is win every week. 
and win every week by 30 plus points. It just doesn't happen like that. If you want to be an elite team, you're going to have to go up against those elite teams, and then the playing field gets evened out. So, Aaron, I 100% agree with you. There are six to seven teams in the nation that really, I feel like, have a shot to win the national championship every year. And one of those teams that has entered the chat— Six or seven? I think so, because one of the teams that has entered the chat is Florida. And they're the number six ranked team in the nation right now. They're hosting Arkansas this weekend. Florida is a 17 and a half point favorite. This game kicks off at 7 p.m. And don't look now, but Felipe Franks, I think right now, and I know this is your boy, Aaron, I I might steal him from you. He might be the SEC's comeback player of the year. About time. Look, he's got a bunch of familiarity with what Todd Grantham wants to do. He knows the guys on Florida's defensive side of the ball. He's been playing well. If Felipe Franks doesn't turn the football over, Arkansas has got a great chance to keep this thing close, but Florida is rolling. Yes, they'll be without Kyle Pitts, Kadarius Toney, Kyle Trask, obviously Dan Mullins in a groove of play calling. This is a big game for both teams because Florida has to keep the momentum, and I think Sam Pittman, I know that he won't be on the sideline this weekend. I think Sam Pittman knows that if he can keep this thing close, his SEC Coach of the Year candidacy just becomes that much more crystal clear thoughts here murray it's a lot of points 17 and a half yeah, in the swamp it's a lot. And, and, the, and the one thing that we know about that arkansas this season at least they cover you know go back to what two weeks ago who were they playing a and m and they finally a&m backdoor cover, cover at the end of the day so you know the good thing is that you know pit uh, pitman's out uh, as, as coach but barry odom obviously has head coaching uh capability he's been a head coach so i think that's that's a great sign for those guys and and I think it is a big deal that that Pitts is missing for Kyle Pitts for Florida. Um, you know, he's a matchup nightmare. He really is. He, he's tough. I mean, when you have to focus your defense solely on him, you know, that's when Kadarius Tony and some other guys really start to flourish within that offense. So I think missing him is going to be a little bit of a chink in the armor for Florida this weekend. Going against an Arkansas defense that has played really well this season. I mean, there's going to be a couple games here or there where it has been great, but overall, Arkansas defensively has been solid. Felipe Franks has been taking care of the football. I mean, Felipe Franks, through six games, three interceptions. Holy smokes. I mean, that is just baffling to me. Yeah. Florida wins this game. I do think Felipe throws one pick, maybe two picks. I think he kind of goes out there and maybe tries to be a superhero and, and throw two middle fingers up at the Florida fans and um, <laughs> you know does something stupid along the way. But overall, you know, I've, I've been really been a fan of what what Coach Pittman's been able to do with this Arkansas football team this season. I think they come in hungry uh, to to get a big victory this season once again. Florida's just too good. Cal Trask is too good. Dan Mullen, like you said, is doing a great job calling plays. But I, I, I like Arkansas with the points here, 17 and a half against a good defense, and you're missing your best player on offense. Yeah. You know, yeah. and then all of a sudden Arkansas is going to be able to say, hey, we're just going to tone, you know, hone in on on Tony. Yeah. You know, we don't have to worry about Pitts. If we can just slow down Kadarius, you know, what other weapons can you really go out go at us that can, you know, obviously win the game for you but dominate? So I think they can keep this thing close. I like Arkansas uh, with the points here. Yeah, I mean, we're on the same side. Seventeen and a half is an absolutely gigantic number. I I'll, f- I'll put. I'm gonna. I feel so good. This is my. Uh, wow. This, this is, is lock pick. of the week to get off this the schneid. Lock of the week right here. Wow. All right. Well, there you go. Aaron Murray feeling so good. He makes it his lock of the week. We 100% Pitts is not playing. <laughs> yeah, but okay, you 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 uh you mentioned Pitts is a matchup nightmare. It it almost it doesn't matter because when he's so well defended like last week against Georgia, he just goes up and gets it. I mean, the guy is indefensible. Yep. He he really is fantastic. Um, it was unfortunate to see him get knocked out of the game. Lewis Seen obviously knocked himself out in the process. What a collision that was. I, I did. I think we mentioned that on Monday. I didn't necessarily think it was malicious or had ill intent. It was just such a fast bang-bang play. And, and hopefully Kyle Pitts gets back on the field sooner rather than later because that dude is an absolute animal with him being out. And maybe, I think, with Kyle Trask, Hearing the Heisman talk and and trying to put the stat line higher and higher, I just think Barry Odom, of course, the defensive coordinator and the interim head coach as Sam Pittman is out at Arkansas in COVID-19 protocol, I think these guys are going to be able to draw something up to keep Florida at bay from hanging 50 on them. And if they keep them from hanging 50, maybe high 30s, uh, I think 
Arkansas keeps it close enough. So, Aaron, you and I are on the same side for our first three games of punt, pass, and pick. Listen, if you want to make it the flip the, the field, field too, we half. can jump it on it together. I so think I'm I've got my flip the field, and it's going to be an ugly-ass pick, but I'll let you know towards the end. Let me get some prize picks in here, though, because I think this Florida-Arkansas game is prime to make some money on prize picks. Kyle Trask, 30 and a half fantasy point projection. Aaron, over or under for Kyle God, Trask? God, so, oh, so under. So um, that, under. I mean, so under I'm, I'm i'm literally on my fantasy price picks app right now about to just put the house on this one okay um i mean i said it you're going against a, a an arkansas defense that's been pretty darn good this season and you're missing your best weapon um and, and kyle pitt so you know i just Play don't feel odds. very good about it. i love kyle Trask. i think he has a good game you know I, I i can see him throwing two or three touchdowns no interceptions very accurate but you know, was it 30 points is 30 a lot of a points. Half. I mean, you have to have a baller ass game to put up 30 <laughs> yeah. fantasy points. And I just, like I said, without your number one target out there against a good defense, um, you know, let's not forget, this is a defense that, you know, you go back to when they played Ole Miss for six interceptions. I know. I mean, this defense is going to play coverage. They're going to sit back and say, listen, Florida, you guys can't run the football. You don't have, you don't have pits. We're just going to play coverage and see what you can do and maybe slow play this game and force you guys into maybe making a couple mistakes here or there. So I don't see it happen. 30 points is way too much. Has a good game, but not that good of a game. All right, Felipe Franks, 18.5 fantasy point projections for Arkansas. I'll go over for Felipe Franks. 18? I, I thought it was 20. Well, it's obviously been bet down. This is a live marketplace well, I, I on wanna Price Picks. I want to change mine. The, my email I sent well, you this morning. There I you go. Change it now that it's, you can change it. But 18.5 is over. Yet. Over 18.5 for Felipe Franks for sure, right? Yeah, I think over over just because of the fact too they you know, I don't see them winning, so I think they're gonna have to throw the ball late. You yep. know, maybe a trash touchdown covers it at the end of the game for him. Um, you know, I do think he makes a mistake here or there, but overall, I mean, he's done a great job. Go back to last week of just taking what the defense gives him nice and easy, dinking and dunking. You saw in lot like I said, last week's game and all of a sudden second half, he blew up, the offense blew up once the defense started trying to Try to take away some of those short passes. So if he can just stay within himself, he can definitely have a good game, good enough game to get over 18 points. Absolutely. I'm going to give you two kickers. Evan McPherson from Florida projected nine fantasy points. He's going over. Arkansas's defense, especially without Kyle Pitts, Florida's going to get stopped in the red zone probably more than they like. He will knock it through, go over Evan McPherson with nine points. And then Parker White is South Carolina's kicker. Ole Miss's defense is horrible. South Carolina's offense will be able to score points. He's definitely going to get a field goal as well. Over 5.5 points for Parker White, who is South Carolina's kicker, and over 9 points Damn, for Evan McPherson. Some kicker stats, hey, I'm I coming like in ones. here. I'm you coming here to help you like, out. The, I'm like Googling, who the hell is Drew talking about right now? <laughs> hey, but that's how you do it on prize picks because you got to get enough players if you hey, want to flex send me that, play. What did you say, South Carolina kicker? Yes. Parker White, five? over five, five and a points? half points. Yes, he's going to get oh, over five hell, and a half points. Yeah. So that's how you do it on Prize Picks. Download the Prize Picks app. Use the promo that's code PUNT. Up. Do a flex play. Do a power play. Win in 10x your money. I won an entry last night. Check us out at Prize Picks, at Aaron Murray, at Drew Butler on Twitter. We will be posting our picks from this weekend. All right, let's wrap this thing up. Two more games. Number 13, Wisconsin, back in action, laying four and a half points at Michigan, Aaron. This game's at 7.30 p.m. Saturday night. A huge matchup in the Big Ten. Jim Harbaugh, I said it last week, and he didn't do it. Jim Harbaugh has to win this football game. He has to win, or else he is literally going to pack up his bags and head back to the NFL. They got embarrassed by Indiana last weekend. They are on a three-game skid after a great start to the season. Or is it two-game skid? Three or two-game they're two one games. and two, so two yes, games. Yes, they good. lost to Michigan State. They've lost to Indiana now. Now they host number 13, Wisconsin. I am taking the four and a half points here with Michigan. It stinks out loud. Michigan is no good. Is, what had, what's up? Can, can Mertz play in this game for Wisconsin? Um, I don't. That's a great question. I don't know if Mertz can play <laughs> or not. But I got to go with Michigan here. I mean, give me Michigan at home plus four and a half. Jim Harbaugh, do something for me, please. I'm with the Wolverines. I might look like an idiot late on Saturday, but who cares? I've got to do it. I've got to take it. So, Aaron, that's the side I'm on. Go ahead, and I'll look up about Graham Mertz, but keep going. 
Yeah, I'm looking up this Mertz thing right too. He's still in COVID protocol right now. Wow. Um, the offense coordinator said his status depends on his preparation time this week if he gets clearance from the team's sports medicine, um, uh, medicine staff. Could return for Michigan game. He could. Yes. But, I mean, he hasn't been really been practicing. So, I mean, I mean, you're talking about a kid who hasn't thrown a football in three weeks. So, um, uh, who'd you go with? I uh, give me the points of Michigan. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna go with Michigan just on that. I mean, if you're gonna go with <laughs> yeah, absolutely. If you're gonna go with Mert. If you're gonna say Grant Grant Mertz, who had a tremendous game, I mean, let's go back to that first game, 20 21, 248, five touchdowns, was absolutely brilliant in the win versus Illinois. But the kid hasn't picked up a football and thrown it to his receivers in three weeks. Yeah. So if he's gonna be your starter, I don't know if you feel good about that, and then I don't know if you, how good you feel about your backup quarterback as well. So I think well, he had COVID too. Wisconsin, the so backup, yeah, yeah, the no backup quarterback of it too. Yeah. So, yeah, the, the the quarterback issue is a real deal. I mean, you're talking about a team that, you know, kind of re-identified itself in its offense last this the first game of the year because they lost their Jonathan Taylor uh, to the NFL, their their great running back. So, I mean, we don't really know much about the running attack for Wisconsin. Now the question mark is on the quarterback and who's going to be the quarterback. Have they had time to prepare? You know, are you going to be you're using your third, fourth string guy? I'm uh, just for that reason. I hate it because I th- I love Wisconsin. I loved what I saw week one, but just way too many question marks on the offense um, heading into this game. So I'm going to take Michigan as well. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you. And I'm gonna I'm gonna throw another statistic out from the Bear at Chris Felique on Twitter. I mean, giddy up for this one. It is an ugly statistic for Michigan fans and specifically for Jim Harbaugh. Under Jim Harbaugh, Michigan is 0 and 10 straight up as an underdog. 2-8 and eight against the spread. That includes a pair of double-digit losses to Wisconsin at Camp Randall. This is the first time Michigan is a home underdog to someone other than Ohio State under Harbaugh. The last upset Michigan pulled came in 2013 when Michigan beat Northwestern as a 2.5-point underdog. Michigan has lost 17 straight games on the field as an underdog. Yikes. I mean, God. I can't Thanks. believe I'm going against that statistic, but with the situation at Wisconsin, you have yep. to take the points. I'm with you. Michigan needs to win. All right, last game, going back to the SEC. South Carolina heads to Oxford to take on Ole Miss. Ole Miss is an 11-point favorite. South Carolina needs a win in a bad way. Ole Miss needs to continue on this trajectory that they're on to at least stack momentum, stack positivity heading into 2021. 11 points is a lot. Um, what are your thoughts here? Um, golly. So, and, and the issue is with South Carolina is, you know, they came out and said that, hey, we're going to determine who the starting quarterback is going to be based on how they're spitting it in the pregame warmups. I'm who like, said oh, that? that's must champ or Bobo? Said it. The coaching said, not Bobo, but uh, must champ said. He that said, doesn't sound like something Bobo would say. No. Uh, I'm sure Bobo is just ripping his head out right now. But he literally said, hey, listen, you know, we got three guys. Uh, Luke is probably not going to be the guy because he's a little bit different. But between Colin Hill and Ryan Helinski, we're going to see who's spinning it the best in pregame warmups and then make the decision from there. So that, that to me, screams, uh-oh, this is not going to be a great game offensively, even against a terrible defense in Ole Miss. Um, you know, South Carolina defensively has not been special of late. They can't stop the run. I mean, they literally – cannot stop anyone from running between the tackles. So I just love Ole Miss. I love this offense. I think they come in, uh, and I think they roll in this one. So I'll take Ole Miss with the points here. All right, I'm just going to fade you. I mean, we've been four together on our picks on pump pass and pick this week. So give me the 11 points. You know, I I think that South Carolina will be able to put points on the board. The total here is 70. 70 is a very high number for any SEC game. And um, I'm just going to take the points, take South Carolina. I think that they'll be able to get the ball in the end zone. I'm not saying that Ole Miss isn't going to win. I think Ole Miss does win. But I think Ole Miss's problems on defense will allow South Carolina to find some consistency on the offensive side of the ball. Maybe go tit for tat on the scoreboard and keep it within the 11 points. So give me the 11 points here, and Aaron will lay the 11 with Ole Miss. All right. Um, I hope it's a great weekend of college football because we need it. The Masters is on. It's going to be absolutely fantastic. And my lock of the week, my flip the field free pick, 
I love to poke fun of these guys. I, I love to have fun with the fan base. They've gone through a, a really tragic week, and, and the story about Coach Schlarman is is absolutely heartbreaking. Kentucky's offensive line coach, who was 45 yeah. years old, battling just raging cancer throughout his body, showing up to work every day with a positive attitude, passed away at the age of 45 this week. Um, God bless him. God bless his family. Rest in peace. Kentucky, minus 17, hosting Vanderbilt. They're going to beat Vanderbilt by 30 points. Vanderbilt is horrible. Kentucky will play an emotional game. Kentucky will be very motivated to send one up to Coach Schlarman. So lay 17 with Kentucky. They're going to take care of business at Vanderbilt. I like it. That's it, like man. It, let's do some. Uh, let's do some Masters. Let's do some college football. Be sure to download the Prize Picks app. Use the promo code Punt. You get a hundred percent match on your first deposit, up to a hundred dollars. Play the Masters. Play NFL. Play college football. Aaron and I gave you our picks, and we have a contest coming up. I believe it's going to start Thanksgiving week. It'll run for a couple of weeks. We're going to give out some awesome prizes. If you've used any of our promo codes in the past you will automatically be entered so long as you play on prize picks. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Have a great weekend. Follow us on social media at Punt and Pass. Follow me at Drew Butler. Aaron is at AaronMurray11. PuntandPass.com for everything you need for college football. And we will talk to you early next week. See you.